You're still watching, Way. So we'll just go straight into what we found in the news. I think I'm going to start with Jennifer, then I'll come to Lamy. Jennifer, what did you find for us in the news? Okay, so what's in the news today? Um, First Bank debuses 58 billion naira to 81,000 female owned businesses. So the CEO is saying he wants to support um, businesses owned by women just to keep them going and they are going to see them through from the first stage of the business to when they can stand up on their own. And I think that's an amazing thing, mm. like supporting small businesses, big businesses, just depending on, on what you have out there. And I think that a lot of people should key into, into this, especially when you don't have the capital to start the business that you want to do. Okay, but did they mention, for out of curiosity, eighty one thousand fifty eight billion naira? Did they mention like how much each um, business owner, female business owner, will be going home with? No, I, I, I didn't uh, see. I because didn't see that. Uh, well, I just I'm just looking at the figures. Fifty eight billion. Well, I was going to ask the question. We, we, what is? What's the question? Uh, mentally, I was trying to calculate it. One thousand mm. How much would it? In fifty-eight billion naira. Well, I'm not a mathematician. My math is very bad, so, okay, so I won't to comment on that. But nevertheless, that's a very good one, and they should be commended for doing that. Yeah, they, they honestly, it, it's commendable because the truth is, um, a lot of um, a lot of um, what's it called um, uh, funds available. I mean, I, I've said this t countless times yeah. that my people, my friends that are with um, Bank of Industry, a lot of funds are available actually for female-owned businesses. But not many women are able to harness the um, the potential there and they are not able to, um, what's it called, to um, tap into the, the, access the, loan. Yeah, access the loans. Access because access. most of the times, because of also the criteria, the criteria that is given for them to be able to access those loans. So when I did the rough math, let's say they're giving them equal amount of money, 81,000 um, women going home, I mean, with 58,000, 58 billion, 58 billion is about 716,000 naira. So that's mm. less than 800k, you know? Well, so it's small businesses. Really, it's small because, businesses, yeah. Um, and if it's just for you to just start well, off, but that's I, very think it, it is, anyway. it, I think it You'll is. You'll be amazed fair. with what women can do with 800,000 naira in their business. Yeah. yeah, yeah, especially with the current yeah. economy right now. I'm just hoping what kind of fund is it? Is it something that is a patient capital? Because then, um, oh, I'm also wondering the kind of um, um, how to access it. I hope it's not going to be tedious. It, the conditions it, to access it. I the hope it is going to be softened. Yeah, that's the same thing I'm saying that, you know, the conditions most times to access this loan. And I'm sure a lot of people have heard about it. They, they've always wanted something like that. It's just the protocols, the processes, and all of that. By the time you see how long it's going to take you to actually get that money, you won't even just stress yourself. You're like, no, Mind I'm, good. The I'm good. Yes. Mm, absolutely. All right, so Lamy, what did you find for us in the news? My story is a bit sad, and I particularly picked this um, topic because it concerns security, because we're doing security today, and particularly because Imo State has been in the news recently for all the bad reasons. Mm. And in as much as I'm not a security expert, I really do not know what's going on there, I would want the, the governor to a bit to, 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 to sit up. It's been one too many today, it's the soldiers' invasion and all that. And this one, why it's it particularly um, a bit roughening for me is because it was aimed at um, seven um, suya, suya, suya sellers. And they are all, I think they were targeted in two days. I mm. think three were killed in a particular night. And um, the next day, by the next day, four were also killed. And they were particularly suya sellers. Mm. And of course, they were of the northern extraction. So this is a bit um, worrisome, so that it does not ignite tribal, you know, um, war. Mm. Because if there's going to be a repercussion, um, a, sorry, a reprisal attack, it might escalate. So I, I think the federal government should also wait in and look at what is happening in Imo. It is one too many. Mm. Every time they're always in the news, so it's escalating before it turns into a regional problem, Boko Haram did not start the day. Hmm. It was happening in piecemeal, and this is also start. Hmm. So I think the federal government should look into the security architecture of Imo State 
and the governor should also seek tightening of his belt. Hmm. Wow, that's really scary. <laughs> Imad, I think we're going to, because the conversation we might be having tomorrow, you know, in Amikandu mentioning that um, this prison break, saying that, uh, well, nobody deserves, if some people can get away with what they're doing yeah. in terms of banditry and all of that, then they go and they rehabilitate them and they give them, you know, almost making them like celebrities, then, okay, nobody deserves to be in jail and all yeah. of that. So my question was, I mean, should we, because somebody is doing wrong, we now also do our own wrong, you know, just to justify, you know, it doesn't make any to sense. But who are the truth When anarchy is sustained in the community, the country, what happens? There's no deterrence, so it will also spur other people to mm. do it. That's the truth. So you can never take that from me. There's no deterrence. Mm. It's not consequential. Nothing is consequential. Mm. It's just like um, you commit crime and you get away with it. Mm. Where's the deterrence? An average person mm -hmm. is criminal in nature. Yeah. So you have, there has to we be all deterrent have, we, measures. Funny thing, we all have criminality inside of us. It's just yeah, that... It's all embedded in our DNA. <laughs> It's just morals. So in that form, <laughs> is this form of deterrence that keeps up all in check. Mm -hmm. So when some people are getting patted on the back, on the back, and some other people, because they are from this part of the country or something, I also sent to the prison. What happens? It's going to spur up. Um, the, it's going to escalate issues. Mm -hmm. Everything is going to go up in chaos and anarchy. Absolutely. So in as much as I do not back what that man has said, but there's an element of truth. Yeah, and you shouldn't yeah. be, you can't wish it away mm. all right so lami my story is actually quite interesting the russian president vladimir putin <laughs> on monday gave final approval to legislation allowing him to hold office for two additional six-year terms lami this is scary opening the possibility for him to stay in power until 2023 when i saw this story i said hey, is this <laughs> is this even possible? Eh? But let me, you are the lawyer, or tell me. Is this even legal? Well, number one, Uwa, I might not be able to comment on that because I am I am not privy to their constitution. Hmm. It's a constitutional matter. Hmm. So if their constitution allows for it, yeah, because their people allow for it, mm -hmm. so be it. But what really baffles me is because Russia is a Jew. And I want to believe that they are, you know, the, the, most of the population is educated. Hmm. So why they've allowed this to nurture for too long? Ah. Well, let me, fact, let, me let me read further. It says, Putin proposed the, cha the change last year as part of the constitutional reform that Russians overwhelmingly backed in a vote in July. Lawmakers approved the bill last year. So the legislation will reset the presidential term limit, allowing Putin to run in elections again after his current second uh, consecutive tenure expires in 2024. This is really scary. Is it like, is he the best person to, 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 to be president? Can't they find somebody else? Why must they put one person you know, for that long? Even, even if they find Uwa. someone else, if the citizens, if the citizens <laughs> vote for him, ha. he will still be there. Still there. Uma, you are, so you, are, are you telling me, sorry to button, sorry, are you telling me that considering all the security challenges, the economic challenges and everything we are currently facing in Nigeria, God now in his mercy gives us a Messiah who comes in and turns the place around and has to go after 18. Do you think we, there is a provision in the constitution that can extend the tenure for another 20 years? Do you think we will not do it in Nigeria? Because of the fear of continuation. Hmm. How we sure that somebody else, look at, I'm not, I'm sorry, but the truth has to be said. President Muhammad Buhari has taken us back by 30 years. Hmm. Just because we voted him in, in 2015, look at where we are. So do you even want to make such a mistake again? Hmm. So if by a miracle we get somebody who comes to right all the wrongs in 2023, and at the expiration of his term, he has to go, and there's nobody viable that can continue. Don't you think we should extend the time by 20 years? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will leave that for our old ladies data for us to debate. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you after the break to discuss security. Stay with us. We'll be right back.